Hello there, Ray here. With the new 1.19 Allays, it is now possible to sort out every single type of non-stackable item. So today I'll show you guys how you can put in Allays into any of your farms so you can get those useful non-stackable items like totems from raid farms, potions from bartering farms, or enchanted books from my OP AFK fish farm. What makes a compact Allay item sorter so difficult is that Allays can actually listen to note blocks and connect with them up to 16 blocks away. So that Allay way over there can actually connect with this note block. But despite being connected up to it, it wouldn't actually be able to drop its items over there because it's stuck over here. And the lays actually have to be relatively close, around three blocks away, in order to actually drop their items off at the appropriate note block. So this guy here can drop it off. But the next difficulty is how far they can actually pick up items, which is even a smaller distance. They can only pick up items within one and a third blocks away from them. So an item like this, it can't pick up. But one that is slightly closer, it can actually pick up. So we have to juggle these three different requirements in order to make it work properly. But there's actually a fourth problem that we run into that is allays listening to other nearby node blocks. Notice if I play this one here, all of a sudden this allay will listen to this one. Now it will only drop its items off if it's close enough to that one over there. So even if it picks up some items, it no longer will drop them off because that one's too far away. And this is what makes allay item sorters so challenging when you try to compact them right beside each other. First, I'll show how you can do three allays per row for moderate compactness. Then I'll show how you can do one allay per row for easy setup and great if you just want to get like one item such as like the totem. Then I'll do the tutorial for the custom bartering sorter which doesn't use any water or pistons. Then I'll explain the super compact version with nine allays per group, great for storage systems. And lastly, I'll do the tutorial on my auto allay breeder. And if you know anyone that could use one of these, let them know about it. And if you're using my contraptions, make sure you give me credit. So first choose whichever farm or item storage or item collection you want to put this into. So first I'll show the tileable design of my allay item sorter. I will be using my super simple raid farm with Hero the Village as an example for sorting. Because in this farm, not only do you get a bunch of items which you can sort out using normal redstone, which I would recommend before using allays, but you also end up with some items that can't be sorted because they are non-stackable. In the raid farm, there is a total of five different types of non-stackables that we can use allays to actually sort out from each other. This is where we're going to come in and actually build in the allay item sorter. So we're going to come in with a dropper because we need the items to be converted from being stored inside of containers to being dropped off on the ground so allays can actually pick them up. Items are going to be dropped into a water stream and we're going to kind of box this water stream off so the items don't go flying about. So this is how it starts and it's going to go this direction. I'm using glass just so we can see it actually working. Now we don't want the items just to fly all about inside of this water stream. We want them to be aligned. So we're actually going to use a fence gate right in front of this so that the items get shot off, hit the edge of it, and then fall into the water. Be nicely aligned right here. And we'll place blocks on all sides of this gate so the items don't fly about. Now we'll need to put in a system that actually will automatically detect if there's items inside the dropper and then if so we'll let the items out. So first we're going to place down a block and we're going to read the contents of this dropper with a comparator. That is going to be placed into a block. Now we're going to make a comparator clock. This is where we have a bunch of delay that pulls the signal and we'll take it around and we'll put this into some redstone so we can make this turn here and then we're going to bring it back pointing directly into the comparator and make sure to turn this comparator to the subtraction mode otherwise it won't work. Now notice when we have some items inside of this dropper here it'll read it and then the signal will slowly go around and then reset the entire clock so it makes a little clock. Now we just need to get the signal from our little clock over here to actually drop off the items. So we're just going to place in some blocks. We're going to run some redstone across here. Make sure you don't have this redstone powering the gate. And we're going to come over here and now you can actually see it's dropping off one item every time it gets powered. We're doing one item at a time. That way the lays have time to pick up because they do have a three second cooldown. So if you drop off too many items, they just won't be able to sort them fast enough. So next part is a bit more complicated. This is where we actually have to get the allays into their little teeny individual cells. So we're going to start from the bottom. We're going to put in the chest that the allays will put their items into. We're going to have three allays per row. Each of these allays will be putting their items into these hoppers, which will be stored in these chests. So now it's time to put in the actual allay. We're going to have the first allay be placed in the middle because that is the hardest one to get in there. We're going to go ahead and box this off. This is where the allay is going to be dropped in. We're going to go ahead and lock this bottom hopper here. 
so that we can actually throw some items on top of it to lure the lay in there. So now I actually have to go find your first lay at either a mansion or a outpost. And once you give it an item, it'll kind of stick near you. You then can use that lay and duplicate it. If you want to automatically duplicate it, you can use my farm over here, which I'll be doing tutorial at. But before you put the lay into your farm, you'll probably want to have it duplicate. And if you want to get a bunch of lays, then use this machine here, which I'll be doing a tutorial for. That way you can turn your one lay into many of them if you're in version 1.19.1 or above. Now go ahead and drag your lays near your sorter here. You can keep them on lead so they don't go too far. Now what you want to do is make sure to give this guy item. Then we're going to actually throw that block that the lay wants down in this hole here. And they'll try to go after it. And then during this time, we want to block it off by placing a block above it. If it's too difficult to do that, then you can always throw a slab over top of its head. It's more likely to fit in there. But now we got the lay kind of stuck in a small hole. We can go ahead and remove this power here. And what we want to do is break this block and place in a slab. That way we can access the lay without it escaping. Now if we do F3 plus B, we can actually see how big it is. You can see it's too big to fit through this hole here. So what we're going to do is we're going to come in and we're actually going to place in a stair. The stair is facing this direction compared to the dropper over there. Now we want to move the stair downwards into the same area where the lay is at. So we're going to come in and place a piston and we'll go ahead and power that. That'll push the stair into the lay. Now you can see the lay is in there. We're going to go ahead and move this slab to the top. And if the lay is not inside this little hole like he is now, you want to grab the lay with the lead and pull him to the back side so that he will fall into this little hole that the hopper is inside of. Otherwise, he'll just stand on the lip of this hopper and not the actual inside of it. Now, once inside of here, the lay is stuck in the hopper and also partly above. And we also got blocks on that side of him as well as above him, which will be important for the next part. So now we'll have a lay in this hopper as well as this one, but these two lays are much easier to get in. So the one that's on the same side as a dropper, what we're going to do is remove this block, place in a trap door, and then have it turned like so. We're then going to also place in blocks to keep the lay from escaping. If we can do more than one row, we'll need to come in with some wool to separate the individual lays. So we're going to have wool between these three lays that we're going to have here. And if we have any more, it'll be on this side over here. Now we're going to get ready to put the next lay into this hole right here. We're going to do the same thing kind of as the first. We're going to make a little tube for it to fall into. We're going to also power the hopper down below. Then whatever lay that we want to use, we're going to give it an item and we're going to drop the same item down in the hole. And then when it goes down after it, we're going to close it off. And just like so, he is stuck inside there. Now this lay is actually pretty much done. And in the right location, we'll also unlock that. We don't have to do anything extra to this one. Now we're going to get ready to put the lay in on this side over here. Once again, we're going to build a small little tube for it to fall down into. Move those blocks and come in and lock the hopper underneath. Once again, throw an item down in there that they're holding in their hand. And get ready to close it off. So now we got the last lay in there. For this one, we do have to move it over a little bit. So we're going to replace that with the slab so we can get in there and access it. We want to pull this lay over into this corner over here. I'm using a lead. We're also going to pull it up. And once it breaks, the lay should stay in that location for the most part. If it doesn't, you might need to place in some blocks so it doesn't try to pathfind. Afterwards, I just place in a glass pane. You can see how it perfectly holds it in place. This way, this lay is close enough so it can grab items that are lined over here as well as listen to a note block, which we're going to have over here as well. This lay is the farthest of the three, so we have to make sure it is closest to the water in either this hole or this hole of this glass pane. Now, it's best to give the lay their item before putting them in here. Otherwise, you have to be fast at breaking the block beside them and putting in a slab so you can actually access these guys. We'll give this guy the crossbow. And make sure you put in the wool. And we can remove these extra blocks. So you'll notice that afterwards, the three lays are in three different compartments and they're unable to actually throw their items accidentally into each other's hoppers. We got this trapdoor dividing these two guys and we got the stair dividing these two guys. And they also can't escape with this one being blocked off from above using the stair. But alternatively, if you don't want to do the compact three lays per row, we can just do a single one. 
since there is five different types of non-stackable items that come from the raid farm, three of them will be sorted out by these guys. And then I'll go ahead and put in two more single allays over here so you guys can see how that works. So we're going to have one allay in each of these hoppers here. In between them, we're going to have that wall of wool, just like so. We're going to then also have blocks on all sides so they can't escape. We're then going to get these cells ready by placing in the trap doors, open them up, and then we're also going to make little tunnels around them so that they can fall down in each of them. So let's say this next guy is the axe guy. So we'll go ahead and give him an axe. Then we'll go ahead and lock this hopper with some redstone blocks. And we'll throw the axe down in the bottom of this. So hopefully the lay will go in after it. We'll also close it off. Now we just need to get in there and actually change that trap door so that can't escape. So you could try to break it and hurry flip it. That way it gets stuck. And let's try doing the same thing for this one over here. This next LA will have do the saddle sorting. So we'll throw the saddle down in there and get ready to block it off as soon as it goes in. And we got another LA stuck. Awesome. Now we can come in and remove those blocks there and also remove these over here as well as these. So now we have a total of five allays, one to do each of the non-stackable items. But each one of these have to be linked up with a note block. So we're going to place a note block here, here, and also one here. We've got to be fast so this guy doesn't escape. So these note blocks are going to make tunes. And that way these guys not only will pick up items that they're holding, but will also drop those items off because they think they're close enough to this note block. Each note block will be connected with an observer between them. So if you make noise with this one, it will activate them all. Now we're going to hook this up to the redstone, which we have over here as a clock. That way these note blocks aren't going off all the time, only when there is an item that needs to be sorted. So we're going to bring that redstone signal over and downwards. And we'll want to have this block to be a solid block, so it will actually play this when it goes off. So let's go ahead and give it a test. We'll just throw in some, say, totems here. And you can see that every time it drops one, it also activates the note blocks. So now we are ready to come in and place in the water, which will move all the items across. So now it should be ready to use. We can go ahead and give it a Tesco by throwing some items in here. You'll see the items will slowly be dispensed. And then you can see like this alley over here, which is the saddle guy, will pick up the saddles and drop them off in the chest. But make sure you don't have any of these hoppers locked. Now, since we did use trapdoors inside of there, and this is getting powered, we don't want this note block to power that trapdoor. So we're going to constantly keep that powered by having a lever here that is turned on. There's also option to not put in as many sorters. Maybe just want like all of the crossbows as well as the axes to actually end up in a chest just at the very end instead of being sorted out individually. Now these setups are tileable, so once you run out of water, you can extend it. First thing I place down an ice block. That way the items will continue to scoop past the water. This is done at the end of it. Now we'll just continue this little tube that we've been making out here. Place a slab in top. And then this is where the water will be placed in to continue so that you can make more item sorters beyond just one water stream. Now if we throw items in that the lays don't sort, you'll see that they'll go right on through and end up over here. And if you want to just have a chest that kind of catches anything that you don't want to be sorted, Maybe you don't want to sort out like the crossbows or the axes. So instead of having a lays do that, they just all end up in this hopper and chest at the very end of your water stream. Now, when it comes to building this farm at the raid farm location, you do need to make sure that there's no spots for the raids to spawn other than right up there. Because of this, you need to come in and either use something like glass, which raids don't spawn top of, or come in and place slabs on top of stuff. But when it comes to note blocks, you do have to leave an air gap above them. Otherwise, they don't actually work. And if we go back here to our redstone, we can see that we need to place a slab on top of this. Now it's all working great and the hopper speed as well as the lays are working fast enough to keep up with my raid farm. Next up, I'll show you guys how you can build a lay item sorter for my bartering farm here. Not only does this produce items that can be sorted out using redstone, but there is five non-stackable items that can't normally be sorted with typical methods. Now you still have the option to sort out all the brewing stuff with a brewing stand. And I sort out the enchanted boots to using an armor stand. So those get placed down over here. And what's left is the enchanted books. So you can kind of sort stuff out using redstone. 
And as the extreme redstone nut that I am, I went ahead and actually made it so that you can sort out every single type of potion that comes from bartering into their individual types using this weird redstone contraption. In this output chest here, you can see we got all the fire resistance in one chest and we got the water bottle separated from those. And if you run this through another system just like this, you can separate the splash from the normal fire resistance. This contraption is quite strange, but the way it actually works is it detects if any blaze powder is being used, and if so, it can determine what type of potion is inside the brewing stand and then sort it accordingly. But rather than make this huge hunk of junk, we can just come in and place in a single allay to actually do this. So rather than having that big redstone component, we can come in with just four allays right here and this small redstone component in order to actually sort out the different types of items. So one does splash potion, one does the boots, one does chanted books, and the last guy does potions. Both have the Minecraft name of potions. The allays see them as the same thing. So if you really want to sort these separate from each other, you can use my other redstone contraption to do that. So now I'll get into this tutorial where you don't even need to have any water streams or pistons in order to sort this stuff out. So starting off, first you'll want to come in and build the normal item sorter that I have here. And this will do all the different types of stackable items. Then after you have that one completely built in, then we're going to come in and actually build the non-stackable with the lathe. We're going to start out with a dropper that's going to be connected to the end of the hopper line. And at the very bottom, we're going to put in the storage. So we're going to have some double chests like this across here and another one that is facing like this. That way you have access to all of them. We're going to place hoppers on top of these just like so. So now we're going to come in and place in soul sand on top of these three hoppers. And then we're going to place a block up against this side over here, making a little teeny hole. We're going to fill the bottom in with a trap door. And this is where we're going to put in our very first allay. So we're just going to continue this tube upwards so we can easily get it down inside of there. So you can move your allays in using leads, then give them the item that we're going to use to sort. So in this case, I'm using a potion for the first allay. We're then going to come in and lock these hoppers by powering them however way you want to. Now we can come in and we can drop the item that the allay likes down into this hole. That way the lay will try to go after it. And once it goes down in there, throw some blocks on top of it so it is perfectly captured like that. And if you have a cauldron handy, put that cauldron in there immediately because we'll need to put that in next. Now we're ready to put in the lays on top of these three soul sand here. But before we do that, we're going to build tubes just like that LA over there, going up two blocks so that we can make an easier job at catching it. So one allay will fall down in there. But before we do that, we're going to have to make sure the allay doesn't end up in the far corners. Otherwise, we won't be able to pick up the items. We're just going to have a trap door to occupy that side. So next allay, I will give a splash potion. So we'll once again try to get the allay to go down inside this hole by throwing one of their favorite items down there. You can also get the allay to come a bit closer just by luring it by dropping an item at your feet. And once inside, go ahead and close it off. This hole can be closed off with whatever block you want. Now we're going to do the same thing for this one over here. We're going to make another little tube and we're going to try to get a lay down in there. Once again, we're also going to block off this backside so the lay doesn't get stuck. Next to lay, we're going to give the boots, any type of iron boots, and we're going to also throw a pair down in this hole. Now if the lay is having trouble coming near the hole, you can throw a boot near your feet and that'll lure it a bit closer. Hopefully then it will see the other one down in the hole. Hey, that one cheated. <laughs> if it cheats, you're just going to have to try to throw it on the opposite side. Hopefully it doesn't go in there. Uh, yes, it's in there. Now we'll close it off. Perfect. So now we just need to put in the last allay, which is going to go over here. We're going to box it off once again. Open that up and throw in our trap door on the back side. This next allay will be an enchanted book. It can be whichever one you want. Once again, we're going to throw it in the hole. And we're going to try to get a bit closer by throwing one at our feet here and we'll pick up that one and then I'll try to go after this next one. Here it comes and it almost made it in there. You can use a trapdoor to kind of close it off and then if you want to you can just open up briefly, grab it with a lead and then kind of pull it over so that it's on the opposite side of the trapdoor. And you can also pull it downwards so that it goes into its little hole. And then you have to quickly break this block and place in one over top. Now we got all four allays in their different slots and we can break this lead just by leaving this area. And each of them will be able to grab the items that come out of this dropper here. So let's go ahead and remove the excess blocks. We don't need these here or this one as well as these side ones. 
and same for this side over here. So now we need a system that will read the items that are inside the dropper and will automatically drop them off when there's something in there. So we're going to replace this with a solid block and we're going to place a block over here. We're going to have a comparator that's going to read the contents of this dropper. So notice if there's any items inside, it will light it up. Turn this onto subtraction mode. That's going to be pushed into this block over here. Then we're going to have the power coming down some redstone with the repeaters on full delay going away from it, two of them, then through some blocks over here, and then through redstone dust, and then we're going to repeat the repeaters going in a circle, so just like that. Now you can see how this makes a clock as long as there's something inside of here, and once that's gone, then the clock will stop, making a really nice smart system that only activates when needed. Now we need this clock to activate this dropper. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a redstone dust there. We're going to have a block on top and a repeater pointing into it. Now notice when we place an item in there, it's going to automatically power it and drop it off and it's going to be picked up by the nearby allays. Now besides the allays being able to be close enough to actually pick up the items, they also need to be close enough to a note block so they know to drop them off. Because currently they would only drop them off if I get close to them. So we can go ahead and remove our power sources underneath of this here and we need to put in a note block so we can put a note block right here for you quickly break and replace that that is a perfect location so we can place a block in a redstone there and that will activate it now notice if we place in some items in here not only will it be dropped off but each time they'll also activate the note block so that each of the lays will think that they're close enough to note block to actually drop the items after they pick it up so now if we put some of the items that they would sort in here they get dropped off and they get picked up by the appropriate lays and then they drop those off getting picked up through the bottom of the soul set into these hoppers and into their appropriate chest. So now we just need to come in and spawn proof it so piglins don't come and spawn over here. Cover this off. We also need to cover up this note block. We can't place a block directly on it. Otherwise the note block doesn't actually play tunes and would break the lays from dropping their items. So we'll place a block slightly above it. So now your allay sorter is complete so that you can actually do the non-stackable items for the bartering farm. And then you can just come over here and pick up your different loot. And if there's something you don't want, you can just have it get pushed directly into some lava. So now I'll show you guys how to build this compact version where you can fit in nine allays every four rows and all listening to a single note block. This is great for any type of sorter where you want to sort out a lot of different things really close to each other, such as in the nether where we don't have water to easily transfer items, or you could do this inside of your storage system. So you can have chests with different items in them all right beside each other, nice and compactly, and I have it so the player can access this from underneath. So this can be implemented into your current storage system with the chest on the side, and then you can run the extra items down this storage system with a lathe that can sort out all the non-stackables, and then you could easily walk in from underneath and click on whichever one you want. So first off, you want to have this being part of a water stream, as items need to be dropped with a little bit of delay before they come to the lathe. So we'll continue the water stream by placing in ice, as well as something to hold it back. Now we'll come two blocks underneath of this here, and we'll place in our chest. We'll start by placing one right here and then we'll make it a double going that way. Have a double chest over here as well as over here, a single one in the center, and then doubles on either these sides as well as continue that one more. And lastly, we're going to have a double facing off that direction. Now we're going to place in hoppers like so. This will be a three by three, meaning a total of nine allays or nine non-stackable sorters all right beside each other. This is where things get pretty darn complicated. So we're gonna have a cauldron here and we're gonna have a stair over here as well as over here. And on the opposite side, we're gonna have cauldron, cauldron, cauldron. Then we're gonna to have to have a lays in each of these hoppers here in the center here. The one in the center is just gonna have a trap door there. The one on this side is going to have a stair that's upside down and is also facing towards this ice over here. So it's going to look like this. You're going to have to fit a lay right in this little small gap right here. Best would probably do pull the lay into that little hole there and then try to push the block or the piston into it and then use leads to move the lay around from this little opening over here so it's actually in that position properly. We're also going to have to place in a lay just on the complete opposite on this side here, the exact same thing but we need to make sure to place in wool to separate this section from any more sections that you build. 
but once again you can get them kind of in that center there and then push them around and use leads to get them directly into the right location and push blocks in with pistons. So once you got the lays on either side, then we could come in and put this lay in here. For this one, it's not too hard. You could drop items in there, and once the lay goes in to grab them, you could just close off the trap door. Now it's time to get lays into each of the cauldrons. These are also difficult to move around, but once inside, you want to then throw a glass block on top for this guy and make sure to give them their items. This lay will need to have a note block on top of it, and the lays on either side will have to have a observer that is pointing along this line. So this observer is pointing in, and then to continue this, we're going to have an observer pointing out. Make sure you get that allay in place before placing it in. So now you got seven of the nine allays in place. They're all gonna be listening to this one note block. This makes it very efficient. So now it's time to get allays in just on top of these stairs. Also very difficult to do, as it's just a very small little lip there, but you can try to get the allays in the hole and then maybe push the stairs in and then place a grindstone on top. And once they're in there, they're gonna look just like so. They're in a small enough area that they won't be able to throw in their items out and they're close enough to the center so they're able to pick up any items that come through the water stream and close enough to the note block to also hear it so they can drop their items off again. The exact same thing needs to be done in this area here with a lay right in that little gap. Now you got all nine lays in there perfectly and you'll just have to hook up this note block here to some type of redstone so it will activate it once in a while so lays will know where to drop off their items. You can continue this process by placing in some more observers and then start another whole section just like this. And then you can continue that to make a really condensed spot where you can actually sort out lots of items and access tons of chests without moving around too much. Now when it comes to aligning these items, you want to make sure the items are aligned in the center of the water stream. So having the items get launched up against a amethyst cluster will align them so that they are mostly in the center so they can easily be grabbed by either side. You could also have an allay here in any type of mob farm that produces armor pieces by player kill, such as my skeleton farm here that uses a dog to kill it so the player doesn't even have to be actively attacking and yet you will still get armor pieces including a chance of getting diamond armor. So if you have just four allays sitting around this edge here, they can pick up all the diamond stuff and then just let all the other stuff go into storage. Now I'll show you guys how you can build my automatic allay breeding system for 1.19.1 and above. This will let you just AFK and be able to actually breed a lays up and get tons of them and then later put them into your storage system. So to start off, you first want to place down some blocks and then have daylight sensors on top of those. And then behind them, we're going to place in some slabs. This will be extended for three blocks. Now we're coming in place in some blocks so we're going to make a little place where the lays will actually be held in. Now we'll place in a boat over here, and if we do F3 plus B, we can see how big the boat actually is. We'll run this boat into this corner over here, and we'll get another boat that's over here, and we'll run this boat into the opposite corner over here. Now on this back side where these slabs are, we're going to place in some fences there to keep the boats kind of contained and the lays properly inside. Now you can get at least one lay, which is all needed to start the system, and pull it near the boats until it gets pulled inside and it is trapped there. Now we're gonna go ahead and place a scaffolding on this side and we're gonna continue this over. This is gonna be a one-way valve where allays are able to go up into this area here, but they're not gonna be able to go back down again. So we can separate the duplicated allays from the originals. We're gonna also put blocks around this so the allays that are inside of this can't escape. Then we're gonna place some blocks on top of this so allays don't escape. And if you want, we can place in a trap door here. This is, could be a way where you could open up and grab the extra lays and take them over into your farms. Now we're gonna place a block here. We're gonna have a chest over here. This is gonna push any music disc that come out of the jukebox, which will be just underneath. And we're gonna place some blocks underneath as well as fill in on all the sides around this so that any music discs that do come shooting out will pop out the hole where this chest is and not anywhere else. I want the disc to fall down right around here so we're going to place in some walls around like this so that the ricochets off of this and falls down to the bottom. And I'll place another block on top to prevent it from falling on top of the walls. So the way we're going to automate the system is we're going to actually detect if there's something inside of the jukebox and we're going to have a comparator that is going to be reading contents of that. 
And then this is going to go into a block like so. And then we're going to have two blocks over here. And we're going to connect this all up with redstone. Right here where there is the jukebox, we're going to place in a trapdoor on the bottom side just like so. Now going away from this redstone, we're going to have a repeater on full delay with a block. And that's going to go into a piston. And this piston is going to have a block in front of it so that when it extends, it's going to cut off this wire. This is going to let it so that as soon as there is something inside of the note block, it'll send out a signal, but then the signal won't last very long as it will get cut off. And then this will cause the trapdoor to open and close relatively quickly. This redstone signal is also going to go to a rail system, which is going to power this rail and move the player in front of the allays. This is going to be done with a minecart. And then once you get past the actual allays, we're going to place in another power rail and then we're just going to power that so that way the player moves back and forth. Now to prevent the lathes from escaping we're going to just place in some blocks so they don't end up coming out this side. So we just have a very narrow area where we can see the bottom of the feet of the lathes so we got to give them the amethyst which is needed for them to duplicate. So now all we have to do is put the amethyst in our offhand. Now you'll need a music disc to actually play in the jukebox. It can be any of these except for blocks, cat, or 13. Those put off a signal strength that's too small so it won't be read by the system. And once you're ready all you do is hop inside this minecart. You want to aim low to start with and then what you want to do is slowly gradually move your aimer up a little bit so that you're just barely aiming at the feet of the allays. So right around here you can see I fed the allay one amethyst and now there is a second lay in there and it automatically fell into the next slot in the of this boat. So now we have two different lays that we can use to breed. And you can choose to make this farm as big as you want. Each LA can only be duplicated every five minutes. So if you have four of them here, that means you can duplicate 48 LA's per hour, which also means it only costs 48 amethyst shards. So having them in your offhand will last more than an hour. But if you want to go on for longer, you can always put out a little dropper system that drops you a new one every so often. Now check out this playlist for all the other cool things you can build that are new to 1.19. Or check out this playlist all about crazy tricks and glitches I found over the 13 years of playing this game. To see how I create all my different farms and machines, make sure to check out my live streams every Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at 2 p.m. Eastern. We're getting ever closer to 400,000 subscribers, so thank you all if you guys hit the sub button as well as the like button, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye!